Kinemoto, this is what you need. You need a battery pack. You need two magnets, okay, and a yoke, and they must be attracting. So pull one opposite, so it's completely opposite from there. One's north, one's south. All right, you need some wire, okay. You need the motor assembly, which is a spindle or axle, okay, and that's the former for the coil to go on. This is where the brushes are going to be. Two little rubber bands, some pliers, okay, and some wire strippers. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your, okay, former just spins quite easily. And also that if we look, okay, here, you can see there's some sellotape which is acting as an insulator. Next, you want about a meter of wire, and what we need to do is just strip one end of that. Make sure that you can see a tiny gap in between there. That shows that it won't cut the wire. And you want to take off a couple of centimeters of wire so it's exposed. Okay. Put the wire so it's at 90 degrees. Okay, as shown like that. Okay, and then you're going to put it next to onto the coil and start winding. The thing to do is if you start off with it in that position there, you'll find it makes it a lot easier for later on. So that's what I'm going to start doing now. So hold it, one finger there, and start winding. Okay, I'm just going to couple of tips when you're doing this make sure you go either side of the first wire as you go but you can see I'm keeping it under tension by using my thumb to hold it so as I turn on the next one I'm going to go on the opposite side to the first and so on and so forth couple of turns in, you'll notice that it's going either side okay, of where the brush contacts are going to be and effectively my split ring commutator is going to be either side of this. Okay, we're coming to the end, I've just got a little bit of wire left. Okay, what I must make sure you can see, I can't see any of the wires down that side or down there. It's fairly tight on the bits from here, on that end, and what I need to do is on this end, took this so it's symmetrically opposite to that. This is perhaps the hardest thing to do, but I want to tuck this wire underneath here uh, because it will sit opposite and be very good uh, connection. So it's quite hard to do, but make a little gap here so that you can feed this wire through. Okay, it's bear with me, it is tough to do. Okay, but if you, it's worth it. So if I pull this through from here, I've made that look a lot easier than it actually is. That's ready to come out on that side. Okay, so trim on off any excess and then use the wire stripper to strip back this part here. I'm going to use the wire strippers again on this side. Careful not to cut the wire. Makes it very difficult. Okay. Right, now, these need to be sat opposite. And that's what I'm going to spend a bit of time doing. Okay, so I've got the two in place now. They're pretty neat. Okay. But what I want to do is hold them in place uh, so they don't move about when it spins. Okay, and this is where... Uh, the rubber pans come into their own. Little tip for you, take some nose pliers, okay, and put it over like that. You then can open them up and then slip in one, followed by the other one, and slide it down, easing as you go. Oh. So I'm in from there down to the bottom, take the nose pliers out. That's what the nose pliers make that so much easier to do. 
Okay, so they're either side now. And then, to make better contacts, just fold that over like that. Tuck it into the rubber band, if you can. And do the same on this side. And so I've got a loop there, a loop there. Let's just zoom in just for a better look. So it's a loop like that, a loop like that. Now, if I can, I'm going to try and tuck that bit underneath the rubber there with the nose pliers. And then I'm going to put another rubber band at the top there just to hold the top part in place. Okay, so I've added the second one. And as you see, as I rotate it round, okay, it's quite good on this side, not fully tucked in. Could do with just splitting that a little bit on this side, so there's two clear parts, okay, and the loop from there. So that is going to be one side of this split ring, that's going to be the other. Now we're going to make the brushes. Okay, single core wire is best for this. Um, because of the springy nature of the metal inside. So, don't need much, okay. Um, and I need to split it into two. Okay, and then just cut. Now one end is just, just for the crock clips, so I'll just strip a bit off. Okay, connect those in a moment. Now, little tip on the other end, okay. Strip it, but don't take it off. You'll see why in a moment. So if I'll just, just zoom in on this bit. Can't focus. You can see it's just got a little bit of bare on there. Okay, so I'm going to do that to the other one. Measuring up helps enormously here. So if you imagine this side is going to be one brush from that side and I need another one on the other side. So you've got to pick the hole, okay, and imagine that the brush, okay, is there on the axle. So then once you've got that, measure that from there, wrap that, okay, under the first pin, and then to keep that in place, you wanna put this wire underneath the second pin so it stays in place, okay? I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Okay, done now from there. Now the brushes will sit approximately either side on here. Now you'll notice, okay, that's not going to work quite at the moment, but I can pull a bit more of this off if I need to. But to make sure they make a good brush contact, put them across like that to use the springy part of the metal. Then you take your coil, brush Okay, remember the commutator at that end. And then I insert the pin, okay, or axle down from this side. And then the trick is here to get this underneath both of the wires so that they're still springing against it. Okay, let's zoom in just to see. And then I lift up. You'll notice they're touching against it, and then bring in, pushing the axle all the way through, so that it sits there, okay? Now I've got to push these on just there. They're just making contact on that side. That one's not going to work. You can see there's a bit of insulator touching this, so I can just pull a bit more off. We can see that's now touching. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So, zoom out. Okay, next, insert this from here. Check that it's far enough apart that that will rotate. Okay. Okay, get the wires with the crock clips. Have it sort of in place. Clip one onto one side. Probably three volts to start with. Clip onto this side. Oh, you can sort of see it turned. That's a good sign. Click it on and we can see from there. Okay, if we zoom in, you can sometimes see the sparks as it goes round. If I brush contacts are closer, 
notice it spins a bit faster. So that's a pretty successful motor first time up. Okay, remember what is happening here is that the brush contacts oh yeah, are making contact with the split ring made out of the wires so that every half a turn the current is flowing down the same side of each of the coil as it rotates to the magnet. Okay, and then the faster. There we go. Okay, thank you for watching.